Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are here in Paris at the MPLS, SDN and NFE World Congress 2016. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Vijoy Pandey, who is, long title this Vijoy, Head of Engineering for Data Center Fabrics and Inter Data Center Backbone Networks at Google. Welcome. Don't often speak to people from Google in a telecoms environment. We'll get on to that in a minute. But to start with, it's a long job description <laughs> here. What do you actually do? What, what's the job? Sure. So first of all, thank you, Martin, and uh, pleasure. pleasure to be here. So what that really means is I'm responsible for all of, all of the networks in Google that are within the data centers and that connect these data centers together. And to us, that pretty much is defining our scope of a data center. So it's not just limited to a single geographical location, but it's a global data center. So anything that sits in between, whether it's inside the building or outside of the building, falls in that category. Now, Google is renowned for the number and the size of the data centers it has, so it's a big job. What do you see at the moment as your greatest challenge? So scaling is definitely number one. Uh, so we do want to scale out based on our business growths, primarily in the cloud uh, space. So our cloud business is growing tremendously and we want to scale out based on the business demands that it brings. Uh, the other thing is, uh, so as you scale out, you have to make sure that your costs are sublinear at least. So that's the other challenge to make sure that the costs are not growing linearly with the business growth. And that brings in all the issues around automation and telemetry and making things more uh, self-sufficient. Or Thank you. Right, now we know what you do. And we are here at a techie event. Everybody in the place is a techie. Um, essentially, everyone here is a geek. And uh, it's about geeks from the telecoms infrastructure background right. and an event. Although now they are addressing, the industry is addressing the move to SDN and NFE, do you think we should be surprised to see Google as a place like this and being a keynote speaker? Well, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I think uh, Google has been building networks for more than 15 years now. And we've built one of the biggest, baddest networks out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've been a little shy uh, and we haven't talked much about it. So that's the surprising bit, I think, because we've... Uh, started talking about it very recently, but uh, we've been a big network player and so we want to come out and share and talk about things we've done. It's very interesting. I agree with you completely because, of course, I follow Google like everybody else does. And one thing you don't hear much about is your actual, the actual internal workings and structures and networks that keep the whole thing together, the, the, the huge number of data centers and servers, etc., that you have in there, which keeps the whole Google machine turning over. So given that, what's your message to the telecoms industry? So I think, uh, I mean, so that's part of my job is to keep the data center fabrics and the inter data center networks together. The other half of it is I interact with other teams that interface with the other ISPs that Google's users connect to. Uh, and so there are two messages I would like to give. One is a SDN and NFV are reality and we've deployed it for more than 10 years now. So it's not a pipe dream. And some of the talks I've seen today morning are People are still struggling with that uh, concept as maybe this is just something that you see in the papers and you just read about it, but it's not reality. So that was part number one. And the second thing is there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make networks more consumable. And whether it's internal to Google or wh whether we interface with an ISP sitting outside, the consumability is something that the industry needs to move towards. And that brings about uh, changes in the configuration and management planes and the telemetry systems and how you just operate these things. When you say consumability, you're talking it at it from whose point of view? So yes, so that's a good question. So it's not from the consumer per se, but from the network engineer, the network operator, the infrastructure builder point of view. Now then, we're here at an, an amalgamated event, MPLS, SDN, NFV, as we've already said, MPLS is a venerable old technology. Do you see the three things working together at all? Or do you think they will eventually separate? No, absolutely. I think they will work together. I mean, 
It depends on how you treat each one of them. Uh, these technologies, I mean, they're all tools in the basket and mm. how you use them to build your network is up to you uh, as, as a network operator per se. Uh, for us especially, I mean, we've used MPLS primarily as an en encapsulation mechanism. Sure. So whether we end up using the protocols and the baggage that comes with it is a choice that we make. And there are some parts of the network that we do use that entire stack. There are other parts of the network that we are just using MPLS as a encapsulation mechanism and we use SDN controllers along with it. Uh, it's interesting to hear though, Vijay, that even after all these years, it's still a viable and useful technology in more ways than one. Yes, that is true. I mean, I think a couple of the reasons are that it's, it's a pretty straightforward, uh, conceptually straightforward piece of technology. Mm. And like I said, coupled with SDN controllers that might sit outside, it becomes pretty simple to build a network using this technology. Plus, like I mentioned earlier, there are parts of the network that do have to interface with other ISPs. And if there is an MPLS mesh, LSP mesh, we do need to interoperate with that as well. So it is an important piece of technology. Thank you. Can we move on to something else, which is the, the concept of open and openness that goes on hand in glove with NFV. Um, as a result of the openness, as, we, as you know, as we know, what happened is that the service providers and operators around the world said, we've been locked into particular vendors for a long time now. This is a new technology. We like it. We like STM. We like NFV. We're prepared to go along with it, but we don't want to be locked into a particular vendor anymore. We want this to be open so we can take our pick, mix and match mm -hmm. what we want from where. And the net result of that has been a proliferation of ecosystems. There are many of them now including the open source stuff, but many, many different sorts. And what I speak to people a lot about this, and I speak to um, service providers about it, and they're getting a bit confused about how they're going to, who and how they're going to choose as a transformation partner, given that there are so many players involved. What do you make of that? Is it, is it making life difficult? So I can give you a perspective from Google's point of view. Mm. And it, that was one of the bigger reasons why we opted to do things in-house. And I do understand that not everyone has uh, the appetite to do that. But the confusion in the marketplace was one of the biggest reasons where we decided to just take matters in our own hand and build the software stacks around NFV and SDN. But I do see that being a problem for the community. And if it's, I would say it's uh, a message out to the vendor community more than anything else to pretty much get their act together and converge upon a few strategic, uh, I would say, groups uh, that uh, will deliver NFV and SDN solutions moving forward. Otherwise, this will be a long tail and it'll just disappear. And people and vendors, I mean, operators who can build it themselves will emerge as the clear winners, but everybody else will be left to compete on their own, which is not a good thing. Uh, what about standardization within NFV, NFV join with. Again, there are a lot of standards bodies out there, which is perhaps a little odd considering it's supposed to be open to start with. Same question again, ecosystem, standard systems. Do you think there are too many? So I think in terms of standardization, I mean, I'm a firm believer that uh, things should be developed and deployed and learned from. and. The standards can either come later or they can evolve along with it. Uh, that's why I think the open source piece is so critical uh, because you can try things out, you can build stuff and deploy it and learn from there instead of trying to build a standard from nothing, from scratch. Uh, mm -hmm. But even having said that, I think uh, the open source community is also proliferating quite a bit and is fragmenting and that's not a good place to be in. I mean, I was one of the founding members of Open Daylight Back in, the, yeah. back in the day, around yeah. three years ago at yeah, this point. I remember it, yeah. And I think, uh, so between ONOS and ODL, and there's confusion in everybody's mind as to where to go, we do need to converge, and we do need to work towards use cases that are important. I mean, I just gave a talk where we showed four critical use cases that we've deployed SDN towards, and I'm sure those problems are, problems will sound familiar to everyone in the operator community. So uh, the open source community has to go after these use cases and similar use cases and actually solve the problems. 
and make it a little bit more usable. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, open source code should not be, let me write something and throw it off the wall and it's up to you to, to mm -hmm. figure it out. So there has to be some rigor and that's where I think some communities that do interoperability testing and certify things based on tests become crucial. Thank you. Last question to you. NFV burst onto the scene three, three and a half years ago now and was heralded as being you know, the ultimate game changer as far as networks are concerned. Uh, and no doubt it will be. Um, we've seen SDN and NFE go hand in glove, meet at, meet at infinity like two parallel lines. Um, but I hear from manufacturers and vendors that are getting a bit um, concerned that the move to commercial NFV networks is taking too long. Now, we could easily say, as technologists, that's about three and a half years is nothing in the great scheme of things. It's a huge change. It's going to change the world's networks forever. So just be a little bit patient. But they've spent a lot of money on research and development into SDN and NFE, and they want to see a return on it. And to do that, they've got to sell equipment to the service providers. And they're saying, has it plateaued? The service providers are quite hard to sell to, you know, they're not taking this on. How long do you think it's going to be, do you think, before service providers say, right, I'll have that now, I'll deploy it, and we'll have real commercial use cases? So again, here I would say, I mean, there are pockets of the network where NFV has actually been deployed already. And Absolutely. And we've seen good traction and we've seen the benefits of it. Mm. So for example, again, uh, as I was speaking earlier today, uh, in the data center space, NFV is clearly there and mm. companies like say VMware and Microsoft and others have uh, deployed or at, at least are selling commercial software that you can use to build your NFV services. Yeah. I mean at Google we've built all of this from scratch but again we've deployed it for a while now, especially on the data center side and the backbone side. Mm. But I think what you're probably referring to is uh, Pro probably on the, ra the the radio side and the Indeed. wireless side. Indeed, the wireless side. Again, it's just the whole melange of 5G and the move right. to 5G is bound up with all of this. So I think, again, there my thoughts would be that we should just go ahead and build this stuff rather than talk about architectures and, st and, and standards and things like that. So even if there are a few either vendors or open source communities, I mean, Open NFV is doing a good job there. So if you can start deploying a few things and start learning from that and then iterate, that'll be a much better, you'll see the benefits right away rather than wait for a standard to mature or an architecture to mature.